Good morning, everyone. I'm Ian Murray with Spot On Productions. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Spot On Spotlight, where we have candid conversations with leaders in business and in the video community. Today, we are joined by our guest, Erin Satsker. She is with the Northern Cincinnati Foundation. Uh, she's going to be talking to us about how businesses build a better community through philanthropy. So, Erin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. And I think this is my first live podcast, so hopefully we do okay here. We're going to nail it. So start off, tell me about the Northern Cincinnati Foundation, just a quick background on what the Northern Cincinnati Foundation is, what a community foundation is, because I don't think a lot of people really understand uh, how a community foundation works, and then what the mission of Northern Cincinnati Foundation is. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start with what is a community foundation. Um, so there are almost 800 community foundations in the United States. Um, and the very first one was founded in the early 1900s out of Cleveland uh, by a gentleman um, who just had this concept for basically a community trust fund, a community savings account, really loved the Cleveland area and wanted to uh, birth the very first community foundation. Fast forward, uh, you know, now again, there are about 800 community foundations in the United States. We are one of those community foundations, the Northern Cincinnati Foundation. Um, and, and really what it is, is most nonprofits function as these community resources and checking accounts for the immediate needs. And a community foundation is the community savings account for that long-term sustainability and vibrancy for your community. So it's a really important asset that your community, your region has a community foundation to utilize. So that's kind of what we are in a nutshell. Um, the Northern Cincinnati Foundation was born uh, 25 years ago uh, this year. Um, and you know, it was a, it was a kitchen table group of women uh, that decided in the Westchester and Liberty Township community that we needed a community foundation. And it was really born as a grassroots effort, which is very atypical. This is not the typical founding of a community foundation. And what that means is this really was kind of that term of this bootstraps community foundation where um, individual donors, um, community members, and businesses, you know, gave anywhere from $5,000 to $100,000 to build an operating endowment to support the in perpetuity community savings account efforts of Northern Cincinnati Foundation. Um, and so that really was 25 years ago how we were born sitting over the kitchen table um, with five uh, fantastic ladies that had the foresight and the vision for growth and the need uh, with a foundation um, in this community. And actually one of those women uh, on that kitchen table group uh, was my mother. She's more of a behind the scenes uh, lady that did a lot of the paperwork and, and that type of thing. Um, and then Patty Alderson and Debbie Boehner uh, within the community were the real leaders kind of leading that kitchen table group and so, you know, here we are 25 years later, we're focused on the Northern Cincinnati region. So we're really focused on uh, Northern Hamilton County, Butler County, Warren County, and um, also part of Claremont County. So we're thinking of who identifies with Cincinnati, you know, maybe is in suburbia, uh, either lives in suburbia, works in suburbia of Cincinnati, and wants to benefit their local community. And that's what we focus on. So the fee that we take uh, for our fund holders, actually, this is where that community um, trust fund aspect comes, right? Like if we're taking a 1% fee, we wanna make sure we're giving back uh, that fee to our community. So it's kind of a really exciting thing to be a part of. Um, it is more sophisticated in the way that community foundations work because they're not here in the short term. They're really thinking about that long-term vibrancy of your region. So um, very much enjoy it. Did I hit all the points there? I'm trying to think of, oh, our mission. 
connecting families to causes. So we're, we're connecting obviously people to causes uh, within the region. We're, you know, a, a resource on that need. Um, and we're here to help facilitate the philanthropy. So uh, that, that's very that's cool. I love the family connection. I love the family connection. Yeah, and something I think is very different about what uh, the Norton Cincinnati Foundation has done is typically foundations are start with a large gift to get started where Norton Cincinnati Foundation, like you said, grassroots very much over time. And you guys focused more on, I would say, first generation philanthropists, is that correct? Versus maybe- Yes, yeah, we, we really do um, focus on first generation philanthropy. We work with many entrepreneurs that have built their businesses. Maybe they started it, you know, I've heard the stories in, in my car or in my garage or, you know, somewhere in my house uh, or a donated space from an uncle, right? They started their businesses from nothing. They built it to what it is today. And now they're blessed and they're giving back. And so we do see, and especially in this community uh, where growth is still ongoing, uh, you know, the birth of philanthropists. And sometimes it's almost uncomfortable for them to claim that name. You know, they don't feel worthy mm -hmm. of the title, but I assure you they are. Uh, they've worked hard and now they're giving back. That's awesome. So the tagline for the Northern Society Foundation is here for good. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. And you guys have rolled out a new campaign it's called the here for good yeah. strategy, correct? Tell me about that. That's correct. Yeah, so um, here for good, uh, dual meaning, right? We're here to do good, be good, and here for good, meaning in perpetuity. Um, and so I do love that tagline is, you know, we are here for both, right? We're the long-term plan and the resource. Um, and so, you know, we, when we first were founded, didn't have the funds to be thinking like we're here for good as an asset to the community because what that meant was we weren't fully endowed yet by a large founder or foundress uh, that founded the foundation and so we just didn't have that um, and so we actually became sustainable through strategic planning through working a campaign and finishing our endowment fund for operating and we became here for good and so recently we decided the Northern Cincinnati Foundation Board, uh, when working through strategic planning, that wouldn't it be so amazing to do what we did for ourselves as this grassroots organization to kind of hold their hand and come along with them on building an endowment and making sure they're here for good. So now not only are we here for good, but we're making sure that nonprofits serving our region are going to be here for good. And we felt like, wow, this is really think outside the box. We're not just some foundation holding an endowment and encouraging them to hold it here uh, for asset stability, long-term asset planning. No, what we're saying is we're going to pay a consultant uh, to help you know uh, work out your campaign details. You're going to have my time. You're going to have the staff's backing. You're going to have our boards backing on being here for good. And we're going to go alongside you and um, teach you on, on building an endowment. Because what we find is so many amazing uh, causes are always thinking in that checking account um, mentality because they're really thinking about how can we bring the funds in to impact immediately. And they're living their mission and their whole board is and they don't have the time and maybe even yet they haven't even thought about how can we be sustainable and what's our exit strategy for potentially our founder of this organization who started it um and so we're super excited to roll this out uh we have never seen this done before where a community foundation is actually like holding hands and, and playing all those major roles in um, a an operating charities endowment plan. So this is groundbreaking. Uh, it's a pilot. There was no benchmarking on this type of program because we are founding it and we're excited to kind of learn, adapt, and um, you know really help these nonprofits be sustainable and here for good. I love about the North Society Foundation. You guys break the mold on a lot of things from the founding of the organization to where you are today and the impact that you're looking to leave. Talk to me, that's that's a lot on the impact in the community. Talk to me about the importance then of corporate philanthropy 
and people being philanthropic and giving into organizations like the Community Foundation? Why is that important? Yeah, well, we actually hold a lot of uh, corporate funds uh, within the region, but, you know, I often hear the CEOs that I work with that the reason they're so passionate about giving back is, right, is, you, is they typically get back to in some way, right? You're giving and you're getting back in ways that you didn't foresee. Um, and so doing good and being good uh, brings back good your way. And so, you know, I think one, tax advantages, tax strategies, that is always a factor. Um, I also think if you've been blessed and your company's doing well, uh, it does behoove you to be a really good community partner, community leader uh, on giving, right? To, to give back. Um, and then I know a lot of people right now, frankly, I'm going to bring this up because a lot of boomers are selling their businesses, you know, private equity is coming in, coming in, purchasing businesses. And we're actually working through a great deal of business sales right now where we'll hold, we'll hold through a third party, the S Corp. Um, and they can actually gift more and more strategically. Uh, and so we are partnering kind of with the full team on uh, mergers and acquisitions, estate planning, financial advising, your CPA. Um, and actually, that's a great time to give from your business as well. Um, and you can have your, your corporate fund, but then you can also have your personal fund through something like a business, uh, like that business sale. And so that is something that we are growing in as well. But I, really, I think the CEOs that I work with, they're such good people. They're such humble people that came from very humble beginnings and they want to make uh, an impact. And so I love to see what they're passionate about. Um, and every CEO is different, right? They all have different passions um, and it depends on their story and where they want to get. So from that standpoint, how do you help connect donors, the philanthropists, uh, with causes that they identify with? You said they, there are a lot of different needs across the board, a lot of different interest in giving. How, do, yeah. how does the foundation play that role? Well, I always say we're like one of the team, right? So they're sitting down with our team and they're talking about um, kind of that fact-finding mission, right? Just like your um, financial advisor or your attorney would do when you're making plans as they want to get to know you. And um, and so sometimes they'll say, I'll use an example, like, hey, I really want to help find organizations that actually uh, may pull somebody out of, uh, of poverty permanently. What are those organizations? And, um, and here's the counties that I'm looking to impact. And then, you know, we intimately know those needs and our resource on the nonprofits in the region. And and do our diligence to stay connected, to know that they're good stewards of donors' dollars, and really to know what the impacts are, right? And so then we we hear kind of the, with the, the donor's interest, um, and then we make sure it's okay that they be connected with a C3 organization that meets that interest head on. And all, always, they are so excited to become intimately involved with these C3 organizations, and C3 is just a facility. nonprofit. That's right. That's right. Yes, a nonprofit organization. You, we have to watch my organizational speak. So thank you, Ian. But yes, yes. So that way they get to see, feel for, um, and and really get uh, to see if they're connected to that nonprofit. Because we want them to feel good about, uh, you know, they've worked hard their whole lives to give back. Think about that. They've started from nothing, very humble beginnings. And they built this business, uh, they've done well, and now they're giving back. And so we want to make sure that they are just as excited, just like they built their business, they're building their charitable fund and their charitable giving. And we want them to be as involved um, and, and as excited as they are uh, maybe through their, their work career. Why is it so important then for the long-term impact of a community that philanthropy continues to have a place to thrive and, and, and be able to give back to the community? Yes. So that's a great question. Um, so one, a lot of community foundations and, you know, there's historical context here. Um, sometimes a community can fall on hard times, a Metroplex, 
um, whatever the community is, right? And if you if you had the foresight when things were good and uh, it was booming in your community to build and have a large endowment for your at your community foundation when economic development redevelopment uh, funds are needed to really for a rebirth um, of that community because it happens right uh, and frankly a really great example across the u.s is um, manufacturing plants being closed down in certain economies certain um, cities and then that having a drastic impact on that overall regional health um, and it may be being more of a depressed community. And so these funds have been integral in rebuilding, right? Revitalizing those communities. And thank the Lord they had that foresight uh, when they did in those early 1900s for some of these communities when things were rocking and rolling um, to set aside. And now they're giving millions upon millions and partnering with uh, cities, townships, whatever the local government. Um, entities are to do good in their region and bring vibrancy back. And so we see this time and time again. Um, and frankly, you know, if you have really strong strategic planning in those communities and those regions, then to maintain where you currently are um, and kind of that level that maybe in where your community and where you were born and raised is maintained at that same level. Um, if the government leaders are, are kind of making those decisions to make sure it is maintained long term, then it can still, uh, you know, help and have impacts into the future, supporting the causes, the region, etc. So it, it depends on the area. It depends on economics into the future. But if you have one, it's a huge asset uh, to help revitalize, rebuild or continue uh, the legacy that's already been created in that region. So that's that's a great point. Foundations really are critical, not for just the kind of the social services stuff we traditionally think about, like the, you know, helping with poverty, food, clothing. Um, yes. But also with job retraining sometimes, economic that's development. Right. So things that really help build a vibrant community and lift everybody up overall. That's 100 percent right. Yes, definitely. So you guys are starting on a brand new project that's very exciting for you that kind of connects a lot of these dots into that thinking mm -hmm. of the future. Talk to me about the uh, USS Cincinnati project you guys are working on. Yes, so uh, this is one I'm really excited about. Um, and frankly, our first large economic develop development project as a young foundation, um, young foundation meaning we're turning 25 years old this year. Um, so uh, the USS Cincinnati, this was actually a submarine uh, that was commissioned uh, when we were in the Cold War era, uh, and it was named after the USS, like Cincinnati. So they were naming these submarines after metroplexes and communities, and um, it was no longer in use. And actually, some amazing naval veterans and veterans, uh, you know, it was just going to be scrapped, and nothing was uh, going to come of it. And they thought, why don't we bring it back here, have a memorial? Um, and frankly, this has been a 20 year project in the making. Um, wow. They had tried to get this to happen downtown and it just kept not fitting together the pieces of the puzzle they needed. And uh, up north um, at VOA, Voice of America Park, uh, within this region, it's gonna be the first of its kind. So we're really excited because there's going to be this memorial site that's going to have STEM activities and education to help the pipeline one to our, um, you know, different STEM programming and educational aspects in, in the United States, but also to help the pipeline, frankly, into our armed uh, forces, um, into the Navy, and frankly, even sparking interest on submarines. This is a real problem um, plaguing kind of the United States right now is that we don't have the pipeline needed um, to meet, frankly, that need uh, in the Navy and the submarines. And, and so not only are we preserving a piece of history for our region with the USS Cincinnati, the submarine memorial, uh, and it's kind of this, this peace memorial, uh, and it's a, it's a group of local veterans that have been working on this, again, for 20 years. And so it's, it's happening. 
We've got a groundbreaking coming up uh, in May where we're going to start to dig. And I always say people can still give if they still want to give, right? We're building an endowment fund for them. We have the capital fund, uh, but really it's been a very wonderful project with uh, dedicated volunteers um, that served at one point in our country. And I just really care about having this USS Cincinnati history preserved and educating kids um, to, to be passionate about our, our armed forces. So really it's exciting for us. It's a first time project. I have been kind of going hand in hand as the leader of the Northern Cincinnati Foundation on many asks to make sure that we receive the funding that we need and again, establish this endowment fund um, which we think is important for long-term maintenance of the memorial. And that, so endowment very fund exciting. Means, that endowment fund means that there will always be funds available to continue to maintain yes. and keep that project uh, looking great for its Yes, lifetime. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So when you think about endowments, I think it's always easy to think in easy numbers, right? So typically for community foundations, let's say there's a million dollars in a fund, and you're pulling 4% um, every year uh, to benefit whatever the cause may be. So that's $40,000 a year in perpetuity. And it's kind of growing in the marketplace like your retirement fund would, right? Like you're investing it for growth um, and it's you're preserving the principal, but you're pulling that 4% interest. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to gain and grow over the years and keep impacting that cause, which then... If it's a large enough endowment, now you're sustainable into the long term. And so that's really the place that nonprofits um, need to get to. And that's where uh, the Northern Cincinnati Foundation is saying, hey, we're here for you. We are going to help you get there. Um, and it's our mission right now that we're living through our strategy to really help nonprofits be here for good and sustainable. That's incredible. So if somebody's interested in doing corporate philanthropy and investing in their community for the long term, how would they get involved with community foundation like Northern Cincinnati Foundation to get started? Yeah, so they would just look up um, the closest community foundation in their area. And, and sometimes you can have multiple. Um, if you're in Indiana, it's more like one per county. Um, it just depends on where you live. Um, but look up, I would say, and find what your your community foundation that you feel like represents you and your region and your style of giving um, and, you know, get connected, meet the CEO, meet the team um, and see if it's a fit on on your corporate giving. Um, so a lot of folks will actually open a corporate fund with us, a lot of um, uh, corporations and you know it's so interesting how giving has evolved over time a lot of the leaders like the um those that are working in within the company to have a vote and so we see that this actually happening more and more where they say hey we've got this pot of funding available every year and we're going to vote on our top three out of and and then the employees are presenting on the causes that they're volunteering in and where their passions lie um, and so it's it's really gotten more sophisticated for these corporate uh funds to see how their giving has evolved and some just say hey leadership is choosing where funding is going um so it really depends on uh, the corporation and their style, but I am now seeing this more of a trend that employees are getting involved and uh, really inspired by those leaders that are leaving it open like that um, and getting votes from employees on either all or a portion of their yearly corporate giving. I think it's a really great way to uh, educate on philanthropy and start kind of that first generation of philanthropists. We were talking about right the dopamine impact of giving is real and it feels amazing to give back and benefit um these different missions and stories in our region so i think employees right they love to feel and volunteer and uh and give back in that way so that's kind of a new way that i'm seeing uh corporate funds uh we call it corporate donor advised funds give back and i think that's truly special and sparking interest uh in their employees that's awesome. And I love that, that it allows an opportunity for people to give back now, but builds that sustainable long-term plan for the community as well. So that's, 
That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, All right, last so, question. Yeah. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever gotten, Erin? Um, oh gosh, you know, I have I have had a lot of business advice and a lot of great mentors. To me, actually, I think uh, one of my mentors, I think very highly of uh, the strategic planning and following a strategic plan and what that's done for me as a leader, what that's done for Northern Cincinnati Foundation. It's not just coming together to put a strategy together and then put it in the circular file and nothing ever happens. It's presenting every board meeting on um, the strategic plan and making sure every team huddle we have as a team is where are we on this theme in the strategy and, and this theme and what do we have to do and uh, you know are these still still realistic or do we need to reset so to me um, I think you know a strategic plan writing it down following it and updating on it uh, has done um, incredible things. It's more than doubled our assets and impact at this community foundation. It's finished our endowment. It's allowed us to buy a forever home. And now it's making sure we're here for good uh, for other nonprofits. And so to me, strategic planning, and I would also say just personally, uh, myself, I think having um, grit and resilience um, is is truly important to be able to follow the strategic plan, right? Because it's like change is hard for people. Yeah. Uh, I love change, but it, it's no strategic plan has ever been easy. I always say this one will be easy. Uh, these changes are easy, but it's 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 not it's not true. It's always hard, and uh, you always have to bring people along on the why behind the strategic plan. So. That's good advice. I love it. Lauren, thank you so much for your time. Where can people find you in the Northern Cincinnati Foundation? So you can Google Northern Cincinnati Foundation, click on our website, um, and just, you know, I'm always happy to sit down, have a coffee or chat, uh, and help get you connected to either a different community foundation in the States or um, our community foundation. Excellent. Erin, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Have a yep. great day.